In one of my previous videos, people got talking about Minecraft and trying to equate it to Greek mythology. And in this, I saw the difficulty people have in incorporating ancient mythologies to an expanding universe, a possibility where the world might be getting better instead of worse, as in several ancient mythologies about survival. This is shown in the Marvel movies also, Infinity War and Endgame. Fundamentally about how you construct an expanding mythology and an expanding universe. The central villain is someone who wants to cull the universe because there are getting to be too many heroes. Something perhaps faced by the whole Marvel scheme itself. There's a war on humor in ways that goes on, at least I've seen going on the last while, and that came up when I tried to sign the movies out to do a study of them. I tried to go to the public library and found that one of the movies, surprisingly, although they're quite popular, was already available in the library and supposedly could have been taken out, but they said, no, you can't take it out. Anything handled in the library now has to be quarantined for three days. It's perhaps one of the most ridiculous things I thought I'd seen in the whole lockdown. The idea that you'd have to quarantine not only people but physical objects. And in the case of a DVD, it shouldn't take three days, to three days to clean it. It doesn't have much surface area. You know, you can wipe it down pretty quickly. And shouldn't have to be exposed to sunlight or heat for that long to get it clean. A book, I thought, would be the even more crazy example of this. Perhaps the rationale for three days hadn't been taken far enough and what people would really need to do would be to separate, socially distance each page of the book from each other page, post it outdoors, and make them all be six feet apart. So anyone wanting to read the book would have to read the page, go on six feet, read the next page, and so on. Now, when I could have thought this was utterly impossible for anyone to actually do this and so absurd that I could make a joke about it, which risks the possibility that the joke could eventually become public policy, making me hesitate to tell the joke. That then, of course, was alleviated when I signed out the movies Endgame and Infinity War and, and found out that the absurdity and the joke and the public policies had already been incorporated into the movie. The Vietnam War Memorial in the United States, a war to dead, vanished people, is all one wall that moves downward, gets thinner as you go along it. But the memorial to the vanished in the movie Endgame is a set of monoliths spaced six feet apart, symbolically as people, arranged as if they were sitting in a theater outdoor theater watching something like a concert, which can't happen anymore, which is what happens during lockdown. And much of the symbolism of what happens during the five-year period be when there's no plan for how to deal with what Thanos did in the snap is a depiction of what happens during lockdown. The Thanos snap and the aftermath are a not exact depiction, but a symbolic subtle depiction of what happens during lockdown. There's silence. There's the streets are almost empty. When Ant-Man comes out, he talks and nobody answers him. Everything is sitting there. Garbage just sits and isn't picked up. There's no traffic of, of municipal services. There are no people moving in and out in significant numbers that would be in accordance with the loss of only half the population. It's like over 90% of the population has been lost because nobody goes anywhere. When Ant-Man goes to knock on his own house, nobody comes to answer immediately. Everybody's stuck in the house or staying inside the house. There is only, the only place where there's significant gathering of people, and these people are utter, utterly silent, is at the memorial to the vanished. The Statue of Liberty is surrounded by parked boats that aren't going anywhere. The stadium is empty. There's no use of it for Major League Baseball. And the area around is used as a parking lot with no people visibly getting into or out of the vehicles. There's vehicles with no wheels just sitting there on the street when Ant-Man runs by. So there is 
also less pollution, as remarked by Captain America to Natasha as she's sitting around coordinating the activities of people who aren't doing very much. And when she does call them together during their stage when everybody's depressed and doesn't have a plan to deal with Thanos, they all appear virtually like a conference call. And the references they make all have something to do with the trivial things people notice when they're locked down for fear of disease. The rocket raccoon says he was sent to an infested garbage scow. The talk about the earthquake with the wound from Wakanda is more like a discussion of how you handle potentially contaminated things. You handle it by not handling it, is what they say. And Rocket Raccoon makes a, a snippy remark about the Captain America's, or, uh, sorry, Captain Marvel's haircut because apparently she's the only one mobile enough to go to thousands of planets and find a place where she can still get her hair cut. And there is this fixation on things like doing your laundry and sitting around eating junk food, which Thor ultimately becomes the ultimate representative of. He's just sitting around playing video games and so on. And these are all representations of depressed people sitting around during lockdown. There are people who are depictions of the overall symbolism of the movie. The quantum realm and the movie are analogous. When Ant-Man goes into the quantum realm and said it was only he was there for only five hours, but on the outside it was five years. This is what happens in the movie itself. If you watch Infinity War and Endgame together, they're about five hours. And yet in Endgame, you depict something that happens over five years. So there's this meta-narrative within the movies. The symbolism of the titles I've discussed several times before, the Ouroboros or Infinity Symbol, Infinity War title, is something that comes up and that I've talked about in discussions of Quetzalcoatl, um, the symbolism in The Shining, the three-dimensional chess game, of the Hades references in Hercules and so on. All of these have come out several ways in popular culture. Endgame is the name for a final stage of a game of chess. The Dance of Death is another artistic name applied to chess. There is no media coverage in these movies. It's suspiciously absent after one reference about 40 minutes of the way into the Infinity War movie where Scarlet Witch sees on TV that there's an attack on New York and Tony Stark is missing. After that, even though people like Spider-Man had their characters essentially defined previously by their relationship to the media, the traditional media, and Spider-Man must supply the pictures and be paid by the guy who's defaming him all the time, the media seems essentially cut out of the whole thing. It happens almost in a bubble. And when Wakanda is under attack, it's a literal uh, force field bubble. So only the people fighting really know what's going on. And there's very little participation or documentation of what happens for the benefit of those outside. There are various references to the number six in that, of course, there are six infinity stones. But every place that I've looked up, or several places at least, where I looked up who the heroes are online shows six of them, even though the Avengers at this stage have many more members than six. But the Battle of New York flashback that is shown in Endgame depicts six of the Avengers taking part in the Battle of New York. There are six Guardians of the Galaxy. The most uh, effective team that almost defeats Thanos is a team of six, although they're not all Avengers. Star-Lord comes up with the best plan. He is somewhat egotistical and he said, in saying that he's even better than Tony Stark as a creative mind, and perhaps he has some justification for saying this. He is someone who's not often understood, written off at times as an idiot by others, but he's conspicuously different from the Avengers in that he and the people on his ship sing. He comes about, uh, approaches problems in unconventional ways and comes up with the one single best plan to deal with Thanos, which is not focus on pounding on him, but immobilizing him. And the team that does this is a team of six. 
but the one detail he doesn't incorporate that would have made the plan better and probably made him made it succeed before his temper got the better of him would have been to incorporate the one detail thought of by Tony Stark and implemented later on, which is not to try to pull the gauntlet off Thanos, which is more difficult and takes more time, but to pull the gems off the gauntlet. The whole team, the Avengers team that would need to be assembled to have a true solution to the problem posed by the two movies would be a symbolic gauntlet, a team perhaps of six people. And this is almost reached at times. In the end game, when the end Avengers have put on their time suits and put their hands in in a circle to show that they're in this thing together, they don't complete that same symbolism by forming a symbolic hand of six, four fingers, a thumb, and a palm or back of a palm to form the team that would not have to destroy someone to wield the six gems. They become locked into a way of thinking because of their fixation on Thanos. When people get in a fight or flight situation, their creative facilities and their thinking, rational minds can be shut down to shunt all of the available energy into adrenaline and power for making the fight. But it would seem to me that what they're all missing is that they've never really provided a, a true creative, rational response to Thanos' essential problem. They haven't told him, look, if you can reduce the whole universe to atoms and build a new one up from scratch, why not just build a second one? If there's all this supposed problem with overpopulation, we got twice as many people as the optimum, why not just make a second universe? Or terraform the existing planets to make them twice as inhabitable or make twice as many inhabitable planets or planet systems. It's not like people can't do this. And, uh, Thor and Rocket Raccoon jump star to star. So presumably they do have enough power available and the importance of, of dialogue, the importance of speech, the importance of coming up with a creative solution to the problem is extremely important high in these movies when Thor is locked down in Infinity War he's had has metal thrown around him and he's immobilized and he he still lips off Thanos and they have to gag him <laughs> it shows that even when people are immobilized in these movie, what movies what you say what you can imagine is still extremely important perhaps more important than brute force and that's what has to be thought of and applied. Now, the symbolism of snapping one's fingers and being instantly rid of half is an interesting thing because most of the plans on Earth that are being promoted by propaganda are aimed at killing a lot more than half of the people, according at least to the Georgia Guidestones. Now, so this idea of snapping the fingers and being rid of half of the living things is something that seems to be more of a political media military metaphor for struggles between opposing factions in that they wish they could just snap their fingers and be rid of the other people and this can be accomplished by media dominance and other means where you get people polarized watching only half of the dialogue and living in their own informational bubbles so they never hear what the other side has to say even within people who want to say that the predominant message is wrong, there's something else happening, there's still a division or a partial revelation of truth, which also seems to have to do with the number six in the dialogue about what states might have been subjected to manipulation of the vote in the presidential election. There are have been many states mentioned, but Usually there are about six talked about at one time, just as with the stones in the movie. For instance, people tend to mention Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, six states as the ones that are in contention, but there are others that are mentioned less or as few times as only perhaps once in all the things I've seen, where there's also meddling and implication that perhaps the, the state might have been flipped, and these are Minnesota, Virginia, New Mexico, California, New Jersey, and New York. So there's, like the movie, there are these sets 
of teams that have to get them together to change something. But they are still, in their approach, focused on the dictatorial approach, putting out all the power in one person or in, in one agency and not looking at uh, the fundamental need to give life to people. The stones are ne never used really to expand, to make more life available, rather just to reverse the effect of a past snap or to be used in a destructive fashion which has a destructive effect even on and perhaps especially on the person employing the stones.